Right, this is perception and perspective part two, in a sense, because as we sometimes do, there's just too much here to, to, to fold into one 20 minute piece. So we're going to break it into two of around about 11 minutes or so. So, Rebecca, you, you finished part one explaining the NLP, what I think of as second positioning, genuinely empathising behaviourally, not just saying the words. Yes. Where should we go next with this? Because there's a lot more to be said around the value and the use of understanding different perspectives and perceptions. Where do you want to take us next? I, I think that's it. I think how do we, well, what are the benefits, I suppose? What are the benefits? Go for it. That, first of all, is that it can help in so many different ways. It helps to reduce conflict. It helps to reduce misunderstandings. It can help in lots of different industries. You know, it's useful for sales. It's useful for change management. The benefits of having a better understanding of someone else's point of view helps in, in so, on so many levels and in and so many people as well. I think that it's just too big to just ignore, you know, for me. Uh, it is, but it has been and it continues to be. Uh, yeah. The trouble is we sit here and talk about the world as it should be. And then we have to remind ourselves, hang on, this doesn't actually happen. Mm. Um, that's not to say it couldn't and it shouldn't and that we can't ourselves be a bit of an influence in making it happen more often than it does so we're not just talking theoretically here we are talking with the uh the aspiration the ambition of actually seeing a bit more of this happening there's two things I'm going to throw in at this point uh, i'll throw them in now because it might or might not be something we turn to perception is reality one of peter honey's six principles of behavior i use it a lot perception is reality if i think that wall behind me is green it's green I don't care if you think it's red. I don't care if you think those are bricks and not stones. If I think they're one thing and not another, that's my reality. Perception is reality. And you've just thrown up something else there about challenge, if you like. Challenging yourself to have the will to try and understand someone else's perspective, but also challenging others on theirs. Because we don't always accept someone else's perspective. You might challenge it and say, well, actually... No, I've heard what you think. I think you're wrong. <laughs> so there is, this isn't all cosy stuff. And, yeah. and I'm going to throw in the word contrarian. I've written a blog on this ages ago about the value of contrarians, people that actually challenge and say, that's not how I see it. So I'll just throw those into the mix and see if that takes you anywhere at all. You can dismiss it if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Again, there's a lot of things there, isn't it? And I think just I think it can just help to broaden horizons, if nothing yeah. else. So the contrary thing. If you're only ever talking with people who have the same viewpoint as you, you have a very limited view of the world. Yeah. Might be uncomfortable and it might be challenging to have conversations with different points of view, but it helps to give you a a fuller picture. You know, because as we discussed before, if I'm looking at one thing from one side and you're looking at it from the other side, we're going to have two different viewpoints, but neither of us are wrong. So mm having a better understanding or just being aware that there could be a different view being aware that there could be a different viewpoint i think is valuable in the first instance all right and my oh yes but voice sitting on this shoulder says yeah right great idea where have we seen this happen um i absolutely agree with you i've been out there in print saying that there's a huge value in saying don't just surround yourself by people who think you're right um listen to some people who actually think you're wrong because they might reinforce your view, you're already you're right, because they might say, OK, I've listened to what you had to say, Rebecca. I know you're completely opposed to this. You've made me think about what I'm doing. And I haven't changed a bit because even though you seeing things different than me, what's that help that, that helped me do is to be more reinforced that I was right all along. Mm -hmm. So sometimes a contrarian can actually be useful to reinforce a position that they don't hold, but you do, but you revisited, reflected upon and genuinely believed to be right. You don't have to listen to contrarians and say, oh, yeah, good idea. Your idea is better than mine every time. Although it might be. And that's where the bigger challenge comes to say, whoa, hold on a minute. Am I big enough to say, mm, OK, you're right and I'm wrong. How can I phrase this without looking like a complete climb down? Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, a lot of the things we talk about are uncomfortable. But this is, I think this is often where more learning comes from, is a willingness to admit that perhaps you're wrong or that there's something different. It's not, again, it's not necessarily being right and wrong it's just an awareness that my way is not necessarily the best or only way of doing things yeah this is a big shift for a lot of people because yeah. i'm also thinking that the 
ego and status mm. that comes with moving up the hierarchy of an organization means you more often than you used to be feel the need irrationally to be right more often than you previously did mm. but wouldn't it be interesting or wouldn't you be willing to give more respect to a leader who is willing yeah. to accept that perhaps they were wrong or perhaps that there is a different way of looking at things yeah. rather than just blindly going just because that's the way they've said it's going to be that's the way it is oh totally uh i i have huge respect for people who basically are saying wow this is painful i don't entirely like this but i think there's something in here i need to think about i just don't hear it very often mm -hmm. um and I don't think it's entirely the fault of the individual. Very often it's the environment in which they are, which requires them to think that way and to protect a position, sometimes irrationally, because to expose yourself to the repercussions of being seen to be imperfect has potentially a lot of bad news coming your way. Yeah, and maybe that's the culture, though, because for me, if I see that somebody... Is human I actually think that's a, a positive <laughs> me too you know that they're actually a human being they do make mistakes they're not infallible but I'm not after they're, willing to hand, they're willing to put the hand up and say okay yeah I made a mistake or maybe yeah. I didn't do things as best I could have done I will learn from that I'm, I'm, I'm not surrounded by people who want your job uh who would say hey look Andrew says he's done something wrong but I can use that um the world which we want doesn't exist often enough, but it can and it should, I think, should. You know, and there's me saying my perception is this. I don't know. The more time I spend out of organisations and I've worked outside of them and with them for 32 years, the more I don't really understand many of them. Because why can't they do this stuff? Why can't people be big enough? Why do the only two leaders that have ever impressed me have something in common that is exactly this? That will actually look at you in the eye and say, just because I'm paid the most in this organization doesn't mean i'm right all the time what do you think whoa that twice in 30 yeah. 42 years but doesn't that make them an interesting and exceptional leader precisely for that reason and there's only two of them 42 years in this business when you've been impressed by two people in leadership roles <laughs> admitting you're wrong i mean i always go back to the i had an interview many years ago <laughs> and i was given a spreadsheet to do something with basically i had to put it into a usable format and take it into the formal interview I managed to delete the spreadsheet first of all, so I had to yeah, ask. I had to ask for another copy of it because I'd managed to delete it. And I thought, I've got no idea what I'm doing with this. And I thought, mm, well, I'm gonna have to. So I had to admit, I had to walk into the interview and say, I'm sorry, I haven't done anything with this um, spreadsheet because I didn't know what to do with it. I mean, luckily, we I had been given a few questions in advance to prepare for. But I walked out oh, of the right, interview. Right, right. But I know you wouldn't have raised that issue unless you thought there's something in here to pick up on. What do you think that interview panel person, whatever, perceived their perception of you that said, hey, this person's just done that wrong. My perception of her is sufficiently positive to offer the job. What, what did they perceive? This is, this is you building yourself up now. So take all the time you need on this. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, recognising that I'm honest. That I wasn't I wasn't mm. going to be willing to there was a willingness to admit that mm. I'd made a mistake mm. you know first of all that I was honest about things and yeah that that vulnerability I suppose in in some respects um and the it, perception uh, of you was was helped to be an accurate perception by your behavior now we're, we're I just edited out the 19 minutes of Rebecca saying how wonderful else she was in that interview. So we're back <laughs> live again now. Uh, so so yeah, you're, what you're highlighting is that sometimes perceptions are built on one experience. And we don't have to be informed, do we, to hold a strong perception. I've got perceptions about people that are probably totally unreasonable in the view of many others about people I've never met, never will. But I still think of certain things because I'm told this by the media or whatever. So we don't need to be well informed or accurate or even reasonable to hold a perception it's still strong it is and again maybe that's another good point is when we meet somebody and we we already have a perception of them is it worth just holding in that thought that maybe this is not 
the right view that I have of them or not the full view. It's not necessarily that it's not right, but maybe it's not the full picture. And well, sometimes that's worth. Do we have a strong enough interest in the people, for instance, with whom we work to even engage in that? Mm. Do, we, do we ever sit down with and say, I mean, there's people, people I've worked with in the past that I haven't particularly liked. And if I ever reflected on why that might be, a lot of that might have been down to me. But I probably wasn't prepared to have that conversation with myself. Yeah. And and sometimes they sometimes it's beneficial and sometimes maybe the consequences aren't, you know, rewarding enough. Or yeah. the, maybe the incentive isn't there to, to be willing to have those conversations. I, I think it d- depends on context, but it, I think it could improve a lot of situations <laughs> if everybody was a little bit more willing to recognise that their viewpoint is one viewpoint, not necessarily the full picture. Okay, I'm going to push us towards a conclusion. Mm-hmm. Key points emerging so far, because I go away and think about this myself. I guess for me, it's about exploring and clarifying other positions of people beyond your assumptions to get more accuracy and more data to base your opinions. So interactively exploring being interested enough to ask questions rather than just throwing opinions i guess that's where i'm thinking hasn't there been times yes there have will there be times in the future when it's relevant to say i'd like to know more about why you think the way you do about this i suppose that's what i'm thinking yeah yeah and i and i think that's all i would like to encourage people is to be willing and recognize that there are many different viewpoints none of them are necessarily wrong none of them are necessarily better than others but there are different viewpoints and the more you can understand that and the more you can see different viewpoints the more fuller the picture will be and the better the decisions for instance and outcomes and solutions that could result yes because we are talking about tangible outcomes here not just people being nice to each other no okay That's been thought-provoking. Thank you as ever. Thank you.